Okay, now I want to go over the kick drum some more and talk about a compressor. Now, here I've got another compressor I'm going to use, and the reason I'm going to use a compressor and kick drum, I want this steady thing to happen. Now, sometimes you use a compressor, you're trying to fix a vocal. The vocal's like up and down. You want to make sure you've got this vocal zoned in, so if it goes up or down, you want to make sure the elements remain the same, there's no problem with it. But with a kick drum, and particularly using it in hip-hop or R&B, using these drum machines today, or these drum sequencers, the kick drum's going to be the same level. And if you don't get the right level you like, or the right particular sound you want, you want to sort of like make it bump a little more, you sometimes use a compressor. And so what we're going to do right now, we're going to show you how we do that. So I've got a kick drum here, and I've got this compressor I want to use. And I'm going to solo out the drum section here and play it back. Now I'm going to do it without the compression. Now with it. Now some of you guys might not even hear that. What's happening here is a little tighter. But I want to make it a little more punchy. So I'm going to go here and add a little more thump to it. Now when I go to adding thump, you notice the attack has changed. Look at the difference here from the tight kick where we have a 30 millisecond attack. Okay, so it's not a really fast attack, but just enough attack. But here in the thump, we went to 100. That's really fast. Okay, now I'll just play it. And you can hear it. The difference also is that we have a thrush level that's changed as well. Let's go back to the tight. And the thrush level before was here at 20. So it took a little while. You know, it, it's past, It's a pretty hot sound. So it's passing 20, but then it starts to attack it. But when you go to thump, we're using 12 as our threshold level base. So that means we're further up. We get more kick drum sound into the compressor. And we've added... Uh, 5 dB. Before we we're just using like, I think it was like 1 dB. Let's go back to kick drum again and you'll see it. That's just 1 dB for the gain. And so here in my thump, we're adding more gain. We're increasing the threshold level. So we're a lot waiting further back before it starts to attenuate the threshold level. We got an attack of 100, but we have the same release. So just about the same release. This is 30 milliseconds in comparison. Before in the kick, tight kick, we have a 60 millisecond, so it's a little bit longer release. It takes a little while. But here, everything's a little faster in the thump. But we get more gain, and we got the 5 to 1 ratio. And the knee is at 8. Notice that for the thump. And here on a kick, it's at 18. So it starts here at 18. So what happens, it's moving further back, the threshold level, and are raising the level of the output and the input as well. And so by having this release time in the thump, you'll notice what happens. I'll play it back again for you to hear it. We get more of a thumpier sound. Now watch, I'm gonna take the release and move it up some. That's oh, too long. Now watch this. So it's pretty thumpy. So the more release I add here, it gets a little more thumpier. The less I have, it sort of releases a little bit really fast. We don't want that. So I want to have it maybe like around here. Maybe I'll try around 50 right here right now, 51 milliseconds for my release. And you can hear the difference. So if I want to have this happen to the whole song, I'll just say, okay, I like the way that sounds. And this is a compression I would use uh, when I want to get me a little more thump out the kick drum and I've got the snare going on uh, that I think complements it where I got this boom and this pat going on boom, boom, bat, boom to make sure it works well between the snare and the kick. Now I'm going to bring back in the EQ now. I've got an EQ here as well. And that was off. Now I'll put the EQ back on. So now we have the EQ and the compressor working together. Now it's important to realize too that when you're using an EQ and a compressor, as you can see here, 
the EQ I have coming first, and then I want to compress what I've EQ'd. I want to compress something and then EQ it in this case for a kick drum. You can do that, but it always depends on the order in the insert, how you have it, and you must be aware of that also. So I prefer to EQ first, then take the sound I EQ'd for, and then compress it.